Don't forget that realism is the goal of what you're doing. Honestly, guys, I think we have something great going here. Welcome to another Christine McConnell craft video, and this time we're making peanut butter pretzel bones from episode one of the Curious Creations of Christine McConnell. This is my third time making a Christine McConnell craft. The first time was the DIY candle, and that one was a fail, but then I kind of did it the second time and kind of succeeded. And then I tried doing the edible teacup craft, and that one was kind of a success, but also, you know. Christine McConnell's crafts are always kind of doable, but also kind of harder than they look. So these peanut butter pretzel bones don't look difficult. Just because they don't look difficult doesn't mean it's not going to be difficult, so we'll see. What I did like about this craft is that the ingredients and the supplies you need are pretty simple and basic. So the recipe we're going to be making today is comprised of simple ingredients that you're either going to have in your home or can gather with a quick trip to the supermarket. You need pretzel rods, and I got all this at Target. You need melting chocolate chips, white chocolate. You need butter, vanilla extract, and of course you need peanut butter and confectioner sugar, which I realize now how annoying this is gonna be and messy. I have my wine because I am not about to do a complicated Christine McConnell craft without some wine. So the first thing you have to do is combine the confectioner sugar, the peanut butter, and the butter and the vanilla extract. So once you combine your creamy peanut butter, good quality butter, confectioner sugar, as well as a very high caliber vanilla with just a touch of salt, you should end up with a mixture of something like this. Also, she mentioned a high caliber vanilla extract and I just, uh, I got the cheap one because why? Here's the first problem and the first part of why I can mess up already and it's her fault. By the way, Christine McConnell, if you're watching, I love you and I'm just kidding. So she doesn't specify how much of each thing do I use, how much butter, how much peanut butter, and the ratio to confectioner sugar. So I'm just gonna kind of uh, wing it. Maybe half a cup of butter to a half a cup of peanut butter to half a cup of confectioner sugar. So I melt my butter and I'm just gonna start pouring peanut butter into this. And then just start mixing until it looks kind of like what Christine McConnell had. We are going to be taking this sugary concoction and using it as sort of a moldable clay that is very delicious. I mean, I think it's starting to feel like it's forming into a dough. I'm gonna add a little splash of vanilla extract. I mean, this looks pretty similar to what she said. It feels doughy, it's not wet. It's more like, doesn't stick. I'm curious to try this. That's really good. She did mention a touch of salt. I kind of want to just make cookies out of this. So your first step is going to be making little balls. The first step is to take some of the mixture and to turn it into little balls. If you do find that the mixture begins to stick, it just means it needs a bit more confectioner sugar. And uh, she kind of coated it in extra sugar, so let's do that. So ideally, each of the bones should have four little circular nubs at the end with a pretzel rod running through it for strength. Basically, you're going to use the pretzel stick as a rod and then put the little balls on the side. And now I have to make the the covering for the rod. So this is the part where you need a rolling pin and we're gonna sprinkle a little bit of the confectioner sugar onto here. Take a bigger scoop of the mixture and then kind of, she kind of like that. I know later on we're gonna shave this all down and we're gonna like freeze it and I'll, this is gonna go through a process so I don't think it matters. I don't think it needs to be that perfect right now, but. But really getting this first coat as smooth and nice as possible is gonna help later down the road. So she says that once you get a shape that you like, which, you know. Once you get a shape that you like and it's been nice and chilled in the freezer for a decent amount of time, usually about two hours or until firm to the touch. She said two hours. I don't know if I'm gonna be patient enough to wait two hours. Hopefully an hour to an hour and a half is enough. 
And I'm gonna make a few more just in case I mess up one because I have all this extra mixture. I mean, so far, so good, right? So it's been about two hours and I'm hoping this is frozen enough. But, uh, I mean, to me it looks good already. You're ready to start shaving it down and preparing it to be dipped in molten chocolate. But we're gonna shave it down like she said. And kind of use this to thin the center. I'm scared that the pretzel's gonna come out if I go too thin. I mean, to me, this looks pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. Getting everything as smooth and nice as possible in the peanut butter stage is the safest way to end up with a really beautiful finished bone. I will say it starts to melt in your hands pretty easily, so you have to kind of like work quickly and then probably put it back in the freezer every time just so it doesn't, because I can already feel it melting. So she gets like a little scalpel and then she kind of, uh, I don't know. is that I don't want to be so picky because I know we're gonna end up throwing this into like white chocolate and I just don't see the point in like obsessing over every little detail right now but trust Christine McConnell always now to temper your chocolate get about an inch of water place a bowl on top of it pour your chocolate in there and temper it till it's nice and creamy and smooth and the heat is well circulated i got my whisk and i am tempering the chocolate here are my two bones so far and i think they look honestly pretty good once i pour this like hot chocolate all over this will it melt it and ruin everything i'm sure it shouldn't it shouldn't hopefully so let's see I'm using a spoon to coat every inch of the bone, but you just need a thin leg. Some of the peanut butter is coming off. Let's pop this back in the freezer for about 30 more minutes. How do I like... <laughs> um... It's starting to melt, and um, it's becoming difficult to... Oh yeah, yeah. I feel like the first part looked so much better before you add the chocolate to it, but you know what? Trust Christine McConnell. I made four bones in total, and I don't think I have enough white chocolate to cover all four bones, so... Oops. We're gonna pop this into the freezer and see how it goes. We're gonna continue sculpting it down just before painting and finalizing. Honestly, guys, I think we have something great going here. So one of my bones broke when I put it in the freezer. And you know what? Luckily, I made a second one. And this one, if you don't look back here, it looks pretty good. But now we have to keep sculpting it, so. <laughs> I mean, it looks like a bone. Like, I'm satisfied. Can we can we just stop here? I feel like I'm good to go. I am very curious to know what this tastes like. Wow. Okay, that's delicious. Don't forget that realism is the goal of what you're doing. <sighs> I mean, it's not super smooth or anything, and I know she says to take your time and to, like, perfect it, but, like, you know, it, it's a, I don't know, like, how perfect does this have to be? We're going to do a couple little textures with some sculpting tools. We're just gonna do what she says and um, poke little holes. Uh-oh. It's starting to break. It's gonna have all these little grooves, pits, and little tiny crevices, basically. Why does she want us to poke holes? Why? Why, 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 why? The final step will be to ever so lightly airbrush a little bit of shadowing in the creases of the bone. All right, so we got some food coloring. Listen, she said to airbrush, I don't have an airbrush thingy, but honestly, I'm thinking of getting one because I really wanna do her shrunken head project craft. And for that, you need an airbrush. I was prepared to be like really frustrated with this project because 
most of these projects make me frustrated because I'm just not like crafty but this one has been pretty decent it's not like as good and smooth and perfect as hers but look I have a bone I mean this <laughs> from far away it probably looks better than it does in close up but that's okay so with a fine point brush delicately filling all of those little pits that we did and then she wants us to color the little holes Shh, I mean why and there we are with a perfectly edible delicious cookie bone so here are two bones one with the white chocolate all over it and the finalizing you know stuff and uh, the un white chocolate version honestly I think this one looks better, but you tell me which one actually looks better, the white one or the just the peanut butter one. Either way, they're gonna taste delicious. This is actually a craft from Christine McConnell that you can do, that's not crazy and hard to do. It's pretty doable. Yes, the peanut butter melts and the white chocolate's kind of a mess, and, and honestly, this isn't the most beautiful looking bone, but actually pretty doable, so I'm surprised. Right now, my DIY candle video is like at 10K, if that one can get to 20k, so if you can go over there, watch it, give it a like, subscribe, you know, all the YouTube things, maybe I will turn my house into the monster house that Christine McConnell turned her parents' house into. I mean, it's kind of unlikely, <laughs> but hey, you never know. It would be kind of fun to turn my house into the monster house. Either way, you should like this video, subscribe, comment down below. Let me know if you've tried any of Christine McConnell's crafts before and if you would be willing to try this one. And if you do try any of her crafts, let me know. Send me a video.